Have you ever been frustrated because your video link is cutting directly in the moment you need it the most? And have you ever wondered if cranking up your VTX power from 25 to 200 milliwatt is actually giving you eight times more range because it is eight times more power? Today we're going to test this in this real world scenario. We are here in Greenville, South Carolina and we're going to compare 25 to 200 milliwatt. What is the range and what is the real world range? And later in the video we're also going to calculate the exact maximum theoretical range we can achieve with the same hardware only changing 25 to 200 milliwatt. What will be the difference theoretically and practically and then we know exactly what it is. If you want more of those range tests give this video a like and let's directly dive in. The video link on your FPV system is always the weakest link in your whole system. Compared to your RC system with ELS, Crossfire, Ghost, whatever you're flying to control your drone, this is being sent on 900 megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. This is way better in terms of range going far compared to 5.8 gigahertz with your video system. The lower the frequency is we are sending on, the better it is for the range. But we are now driving to the spot and then we're going to test how far we can really go and what will be the difference. Essential for a successful test is that we are not switching the hardware. We got the same copters uh, we are using, we are only switching the VTX power. So we got this copter here, 5 inch racing copter and it has a HD0 V3 VTX, so I'm using HD0 as video system to show you the result. And we have those Rush FPV Sherry 2 antenna. This is basically the most important hardware when it comes to our test today. The rest, the camera, motors, doesn't matter. It's only about the video system and the range. I will not switch the copter, uh, we will just keep on flying with this one. Okay, and I will stay here on the same position and I will find one fly path. I will compare 25, when does it break up, turn up to 200 milliwatts and see how much further we can get. Okay, 25 milliwatt. HG0 720p, let's send it. So we start with the first flight. HD0, of course, is not comparable to DGI or Walksnail in terms of range. But it does an okay job. It's better than analog. So here's the first big obstacle, this tree group here. It's directly between the drone and me. Yes. Okay. So the lower I get, the weaker it is getting. Of course, we go here, around those trees, and, oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. This bush here, this marks the maximum. Oh my gosh, <laughs> almost not flyable. This marks the maximum for 25 milliwatt HG0 flying. I will show you the distance what it really is, but let's go back in, switch to 200 milliwatt and see how far we will get. Okay, we are going now to 200 milliwatt output power. Same copter, same hardware. And sorry for standing or for showing you directly the sun, but I need to face the drone, of course. So I'm standing in the same position, same copter. The only difference is 175 milliwatt more output power for the VTX. Okay, relatively stable here. Looks nice. We go here, the first circle. Oh yes, this looks better than 25 milliwatt. But we continue. Yes, also some breakups here, but it is always flyable. So this bush marks the breakdown for 25 milliwatt. And how is 200 doing? Yes, yes, yes. We can definitely go further, but oh, what is happening here? Let me turn around. Yes, okay, there's somebody out there. Let's just go this way. 
and oh yes 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 oh 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 yes 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 I'm here still alive and this is actually way further and we do continue oh yes 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 that's it that's it that's it oh my gosh where am I oh that was scary but okay this was the maximum <laughs> <laughs> I show you the distance. I know it was not <laughs> a straight line that I was flying, but there was also somebody walking with the dog. And I don't want to annoy them here. But okay. How much further did we get actually? Was it eight times the range? It was definitely not. But it was actually way better, even here in the near distance. Yeah. Let's go one more time around the, the first tree group as obstacle. Yes, even here with 25 milliwatts, this was horror. Here it is not good, but it's still flyable. I mean, like the breakups from HG0 are kind of <laughs> unique. Um, it looks like analog. The digital Voxnail and DGI system, they have a different breakup behavior. And even here, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, okay. but. So actually what we see so far, the distance is not the issue. The issue are always the obstacles. And the obstacles are reducing the range so much. And this is kind of expected behavior, right? Let's come back in. I am done now with the practical test. And how much times the range was further with the 200 milliwatt compared to 25? Not even two, right? It was, I did not double the range, but uh, I will check later on Google Maps and uh, you will see the result here. And then we're going to compare it to the theoretical increase in range we could achieve. But this was a real world test with obstacles and everything. And what we do now will only take into account the perfect environment. It's like being in a space. And uh, yeah, let's see how far we can theoretically go. All right, let's dive into the nitty gritty of how we calculate the maximum range we could achieve with this system. But before we talk about formulas and numbers, let's talk about some basics. And when it comes to signal strengths, we need to talk about dB. You might have read it somewhere and it stands for decibels, but actually I'm too German to pronounce it decibels. I will just call it decibels. And decibels are expressing the ratio between two different power levels. In your radio technology, we are often comparing signals that can be a billion times stronger compared to another. That's why the physics is using a logarithmic scale to measure the power ratio. This makes it easy to express real big differences. For example, we got a signal that is 100 times stronger. This would refer to a ratio of 20 decibel. But even more interesting is the ratio of 2. So meaning doubling the power is referring to 3 decibel increase. And 3 decibel is also what we know from our FPV antennas. This is a typical gain that's also written in the technical specification of each antenna. If you buy antennas and you get one with 3 decibel more, it means it really doubles the power that is going out of the antenna. Next up, and this is also super important, is the receiver sensitivity. This is referring to the minimum power level that our receiver needs to be able to understand the signal. Think of it like how quietly you can hear someone whispering. That's your hearing sensitivity. The signal strength reaching the goggles needs to be over this sensitivity. Otherwise, it will not show me a nice image or even an image I could understand somehow. Our calculation involves something called a link budget, which is like an accounting system for all the gains and losses in our FPV system. And to understand that, we need to look at all the things influencing the range. To calculate the range, we first need to calculate the path loss. This is referring to the maximum acceptable reduction in signal strength in our system. Since we know what's going out of the drone, what is being sent by the VTX, and what our sensitivity of our goggles is, we know how much signal loss we could accept. And this actually is referring then to the distance. To calculate the path loss, we need to add all the gains and all the losses. And we got three gains and three losses. The three gains are, of course, our RX and TX antenna, and I assume our TX antenna on the drone is a bit smaller with 1.5 decibel gain and the RX antenna on the goggles a bit bigger with 3 dB. And the output power, of course, is also increasing our range. Our three losses are our TX and RX losses and they are mainly coming from our antennas. 
every coax cable, every SMA connector is reducing the range and the signal. And also the RX sensitivity, right? We need to exceed it. So basically, the lower it is, the better it is for the range. Now we just put everything together and our three gains and our three losses will be the path loss. But we are using HC0, 5.8 GHz, of course, 25 or 200 milliwatt. We have a small antenna. It's a race copter, 1.5 decibel. Our RX antenna on the goggles is a bit bigger, 3 decibel. Our RX sensitivity, as discussed, is minus 105 decibel. The negative value is always referring to a really, really small decibel value. For our RX and TX losses that we are having in the antenna cable, I have one SMA connector and 10 cm of cables calculated. Ta-da! We just entered the values and here it is. Our range with 25 milliwatt is 1800 meters and with 200 milliwatt it's 5100 meters. Is this kind of expected numbers? What did you think? So 200 milliwatt is giving us 2.8 times the 25 milliwatt range. This is interesting, but the power increase is 8 times. So basically what is going on here? And this brings us to the genius idea that the range increase is the square root of the power increase. 2.8 is the square root of 8. And this is the relationship between these two numbers. Since our hardware is not changing and we're just changing the power, we can use this easy formula to calculate our extended range. If we quadruple our power, this means we double our range. Real world conditions cannot be expressed in this calculation. And that's why this calculation is kind of shitty, right? because you cannot apply it in the real world. Five kilometers would be nice, but it gives you a rough estimation. Small changes, as you saw in the DVR, can make a big difference in terms of range. Here are now my best tips for improving your FPV video feed quality. Tip number one, check your location. Buildings, trees, every obstacle is the number one signal killer and the fewer the better. Number two, check your gear. A broken coax cable or a loose connector, UFL, SMA, whatever, can really harm your signal. Check if this is working. Tip number three, choose your antennas by the performance. Look in the technical specification and look for the gain the antenna is giving you. Do not choose your antenna by color, by shape. This is nonsense. A simple switch on one of your antennas of your goggles from a 3 dB normal FPV antenna to this one, a helical with 11 dB, is giving you 2.5 times the range. You could go from 5 kilometers to almost 13 kilometers by only changing one antenna. So, to really take care of your antennas. And when it comes to video systems, I guess analog is holding the record for the longest range it could achieve, but it has less penetration and DJI and Voxnet are really good in terms of that. In bandus and stuff, if there is concrete between you and the drone, there is no better video system than these digital systems. And now I want to hear from you. What is your best tip to improve your video range? I'm really interested and yeah, as discussed, if you want more of those videos, give this video a like and then I see you in my next one.